Okay, welcome to the video, SIG Guy here. This is going to be an installation video for the Apex Trigger Kits in the SIG Sauer P320. I have both kits available on my website. We have the forward set trigger kit with the flat advanced trigger, and we also have the forward set trigger kit with the curved advanced trigger, okay? Same kits, just two different triggers, and the triggers are actually offered in a kit all by themselves. If you're interested in just replacing the trigger without these other components, you can get that on SIGGUY.com. There's an installation video showing you how to install just the trigger, okay? This video is going to do with the whole kit. It's got a trigger bar, an over-travel stop tube, and a little spring in there. So I'm going to show you how quickly and easily it is to install this kit in your Six Hour P320. So let's get started. Before we get started, let's talk about the kit itself and what is included and then the tools you're going to probably need to install this kit. So we have the trigger itself. And as I previously stated, this is, comes in flat or curved. A redesigned trigger bar. This is not just a factory trigger bar painted black. The geometry has changed, which changes the aspect of our trigger pull. Okay. And then we have an over-travel stop tube. This will go over the pin for our over travel and then a little spring as well. Okay, so those four pieces are included in the kit itself. And then we got to push a little pin out. So if you have the 320 disassembly and reassembly kit that I sell on my website, I sell these for the 320. There's a kit for the 365. There's another kit for the classic series SIGs. And then there's a deluxe kit that has one of everything in it. Okay, so if you're, you, know, you want to take apart your pistols completely, then these kits make it a much easier to disassemble and reassemble, okay? So the small, there's a small, medium, and large in this kit. The small is specifically the size of this pin that we need to push out for our over travel, okay? So it comes with a small, medium, and large, and a pick in this kit. Um, these are available on SIGGUY.com. Uh, sometimes that pin, when you go to push it back in, it doesn't go in all the way, so something to kind of tap that uh, home a little bit. And then the tube for the, the, uh, the sleeve that we're gonna put over it and the little spring, a lot of times a pair of needle nose pliers help get those into position, okay? So that's what's included in the kit. That's the tools you're gonna need. So let's get started taking this apart and installing the kit. The first step when working on our firearms always is to make sure we are working on a clear and safe firearm. So we are going to lock our slide to the rear. If there's a magazine installed, we're gonna remove our magazine, put that to the side. And we're gonna physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber. No magazine, check our breech face, look away, do the same thing again. Chamber, magazine, breech face. This is a clear and safe firearm. Next, we're gonna remove the fire control unit or the FCU from our grip module. So we're gonna basically do a field strip. We're gonna lock our slide to the rear. We're gonna rotate our takedown lever. While holding our slide, we're gonna release it and slide it off. We'll set that to the side. We'll wiggle our and rotate our takedown lever out. And then we're gonna pick our FCU up from the front, same time we push it from the rear and remove that from our grip module. Next, we'll disassemble and remove the trigger from our FCU. So there's a very easy way to do this. I don't recommend grabbing that pair of needle nose we're gonna use later on and tackling the spring first. There's a much easier way that I've showed on my YouTube for quite a while now. Basically, I'm going to take my trigger bar, I'm gonna grab it with my fingers, and there's a leg of it right here that goes inside our sear housing. I'm going to lift up on my trigger bar. I'm going to pull it out and rotate that leg around the back side of our sear housing so it's sitting like right over here, okay? What that's going to do is that's going to put our trigger in the position, the proper position, to remove it from our FCU, okay? So to demonstrate, I'm just going to grab my trigger bar right here. I'm going to pull it up, out, and around, and I'm just going to hold it with my fingers. And you can see my trigger is in the proper position to remove it from the FCU. So we're just going to wiggle it and pull it straight up and out, just like that. Okay. We'll set that aside. Now I'm just going to grab my trigger bar and I'm going to rotate the whole thing up. Unhook my spring. And it is that simple to remove this without tweaking your trigger bar spring. Okay. 
Now that we have all that disassembled, our next step is going to be to slide this pin out, okay? That's the pin we were talking about in the very beginning of this video. There's a tube, a sleeve that goes over that pin and a little spring, okay? So if you have a small punch or the one that comes in my disassembly and reassembly kit, you'll see that when I line it up with my pin, I push this right through just like that. That punch is the proper size to fit through that hole. So now that we have our over travel pin out, uh, for some of you, it might fall completely out. If that's the case, don't worry about it. It's not really holding anything at this point anyway. Just kind of put it back into the hole and start it a little bit. Uh, for others, it might be very hard to get this thing to move for the very first time. So if you got to use an armor's block or something to set this on, use your hammer with a, a little punch or something to get that started. I do sell the SIG Armor's P320 accessibility tool. This is an armor's block made specifically for the 320. And I got a review video on my website as well. And then if you click on the product on my website, there's a video showing all the different functions of this armor's block. Uh, it's pretty nifty little tool to have for your 320s. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the spring first. So we are going to position our pin. So that's in just a little bit like that. And then I don't like to really use the pair of needle nose to do the spring because um, you don't want to crush the spring for one. And sometimes when you're applying pressure, because it's a round spring, it wants to torpedo out of here and go flying across the room. So uh, a little pair of tweezers work really well. And then if you have my disassembly and reassembly kit, the deluxe one um, or the classic series one, this is the sear spring screwdriver that I sell. It's got a magnet on the end, very strong magnet. Okay. So we're going to grab our spring like that and the magnet's going to want to stick to everything on here. So uh, just take patience. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work this in here just like this. I'm going to put that spring over the end of my pin and I'm going to work it onto my pin just like that. And then I'm going to slide that spring all the way to the end of my pin. And then I need to open it up so I can get my tube on there as well, just like that. And I just want to add, these are 3D printed, so don't go grabbing your hammer and smashing these um, to get that pin started. These are, like I said, 3D printed, so it's not recommended to use a hammer on those, okay? So my next step is my over travel stop tube. This one here, it's like a little sleeve that's going to go over this pin. For that, I am going to use my needle nose because I need to get a good bite on that. And I'm going to use some force to get it in there because I need to push that spring over at the same time. So this is what I'm going to have to do on the bench down here. I'll see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Just like that. So this pin, we're going to have to open it up quite a bit. Okay, to get this tube in there. So you can see it's kind of inside the spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these pretty tightly. My needle nose and my tube on there. I'm going to kind of angle it in here like this. I'm going to get it on to the end of the spring there. And then I'm going to close it up with my thumb. Okay. Wiggle it around a little bit, just like that. As you can see, the pin is not all the way in yet, okay? It's not going to be flush with this side, but you can see it's not even coming through this hole at all. So mine, you can't push in by hand, so I'm just going to use a little hammer or something to just give that a little tap, okay? It doesn't take much at all. But you can see that that's all the way in now. It's going to be sticking out here a little bit because the head of this is bigger than the hole. Okay, but you can see on the other side that that pin is flush with the side of my FCU. Okay. Now that we have that all installed, that's actually probably the trickiest part of this whole installation. As you can see, it's not even really that difficult. It just takes a little bit of patience to get that tube on there. Um, and be very careful not to lose any of these parts. Okay. So next we're going to install our trigger our trigger bar 
and our trigger bar spring. Okay, so very easy way to do this. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to install my trigger bar spring onto my trigger bar, just like that. And then the hook on our trigger bar spring, we're going to put through the loop on our FCU spring, through the back side, just like that. We're going to rotate this up and around, just like that. We're going to get it into position, like when we removed it. We're going to want the leg of our trigger bar around the back side of our sear housing. Okay. We're going to pinch this with our fingers just like that. And then we're going to install our trigger. Before we install our trigger, we're going to want to lube it up a little bit. So the pin here on our trigger, whatever you're using for lube, whether it's grease or oil, just put a light coat of it on there. Our trigger pivot points. On this side here where it contacts the frame of the FCU and on this side here where it comes through this hole on our FCU, we want to put a light coat of lubricant on that as well. Uh, some people put a light coat. Fix my pin here. Some people put a light coat on the side of our FCU frame here where your trigger bar is going to interface with it. Okay, it's going to rub against it. And then some people also put a light coat back here as well. Okay. So anywhere there's metal to metal contact, you want to put a light coat of lubricant on there, okay? So we're going to slide our trigger down into our FCU, and we're going to line this pin up with this hole here. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to go right through there at first. So we're going to put our trigger in just like that, and I'm going to pinch it with my fingers just like so. You can see the pin is not through the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my trigger bar and kind of fish it around until I find that hole, just like that. So you can see the trigger portion here is flush against my trigger bar now. And then if this hole here, the pin didn't line up with this hole, just kind of move your trigger around until it pops through this hole here, okay? So your trigger has to be all the way inserted in order for it to pivot. If it doesn't pivot, it's because it's not all the way inserted. So double check that pin right there, okay? And then check your trigger bar hole in relation to the pin on your trigger. So next, I'm going to use this part of my finger to push against my trigger while I guide the trigger bar up, out, and around, and slide it right back down into our sear housing. And I kind of squish everything together, make sure all my pins are installed, like my mag catch one here was working its way out earlier. So if your pins aren't all the way in, it's not going to go in your FCU easily. Okay. So there you go. That's how easy it is to install these components back into your FCU. Okay. Little side note before we continue, um, my trigger bar here that I'm using in this installation video, this one's OG. This is like one of the first ones that they came out with. This is back before manual safety 320s were even around. Um, so your trigger bar is going to look a little bit different than this one here. This one has this big portion coming up on the back here. When you buy the kit, it's with the newer style trigger bar, um, which doesn't have that portion, okay? Uh, this will work in all 320s, manual safety and non-manual safety. The reason why they got rid of this part is because if you have a manual safety, you'll see there's little notches cut in the side of your frame, the detent portion, that clicking of your uh, manual safety. Well, this would be in the way. Um, on the manual safety one. So, so you just chop that right off and it's all good to go. Okay. So just wanted to mention that. So that way you're not alarmed when you're installing your trigger bar and it looks different than what is in this video. And that's it. It is that easy to install the whole kit in your P320. All we got left to do is reassemble. So we're going to slide the back first into our grip module. And then you're going to need to push back on your trigger a little bit. So it'll come down through the hole. And then push the whole thing back and down in there. We're going to reinstall our takedown lever. Just like that. And then we'll reinstall our slide. Make sure our guide rod is centered. Slide that back on. Rotate our takedown lever. And release our slide. All right, so our last step is always to perform a functions check to make sure that this is working properly before we return it to service. So in order to do that, we're going to need an empty magazine. Ensure that it is empty. Okay. We're going to install that just like that. Make sure that locks into place uh, nice and securely. We're going to release it with our mag release and it should fall out under its own weight, which it does. Okay. 
We're going to install our magazine and we're going to bring our slide slowly to the rear because it's an empty magazine. The follower is pushing up on our slide catch and that should lock the slide to the rear, which it does. And we can remove our magazine at this time. We're going to be pulling our trigger, so we're going to make sure that we are clear and safe still. So we're going to physically and visually check, make sure there's no round in the chamber, no magazine, check our breech face, look away, do the same thing again, chamber, magazine, breech face. We are working on a clear and safe firearm. So we can release our slide, and then we're going to point the muzzle in a safe direction and test our trigger. That works properly. While holding it to the rear, we're going to check our reset. So we're going to cycle our slide again and let go. That works properly. And then we're going to take it out of battery without covering our muzzle. And then we're going to make sure that it does not fire, which it does not. Okay, dead trigger. So there you go. Everything is working pr properly on this firearm. We can return it to service. There you go. It is that easy to install the Apex kit in your Sig Sauer P320. I'm a huge fan of the Apex kits. I've been running one. This is my nightstand gun, like I said. There's been one in there since the very beginning. In fact, in my other video, I showed this as well. This is actually the OG um, Apex trigger before the voluntary upgrade. Um, one of the things in the upgrade was to reduce the mass of the trigger itself. So um, this is old Apex stuff right here. So... Um, big fan. I love what they've done with it. It changes all the different aspects of your trigger pull, including your trigger pull weight. So make sure you log on to the website and check out the description. It'll show you in your SIG, whichever model you're running, um, what you can expect. Okay, because it's different from model to model. Uh, I do have the four kits available on my website. The kits we just installed, um, the curved and the flat. And if you want just the trigger itself without doing the whole kit, those are available on SIGGuy.com as well. The toolkit that we use to install this, um, I sell them for all different types of SIGs, available on SIGGuy.com. Pistol stands and all different manufacturers, upgrades, products. I mean, takedown levers, mag releases, triggers, base pads. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff on there. I've added a ton of stuff the last month or so. So if you haven't been on there recently, check that out. Um, also, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, there'll be a subscribe button right down in the corner. If you could smash that baby, I'd really appreciate it. So as always, I thank everybody for watching the video. I hope they helped. Have a good day.